Um, came out in the desert today and I'm going to take you into Lovelock Cave and I did a video on it this once before and so I'm redoing it because um, my original video got taken down by YouTube because I had my grandchildren in them if you remember all that fiasco uh, so we're doing it again and uh, I just wanted to come out and uh, I just enjoy living I just enjoy <laughs> can't talk today coming out to this cave because I really find it very fascinating and I just like being out in the desert so uh, let me turn you around give you kind of a view of where we're at and uh, I'll put more of a description um, about the history of the cave in um, in the description part of this video down below so you can read that if you want to um, I'll tell you what little bit I remember as we go along but uh, if you want full detail then check the comments so um, let me turn you around here and show you the valley. Okay, we're going to be going up that path right there. Up to the cave. It's a little bit of a steep climb up to the cave. And uh, here's a view of the desert around here where the cave is. Right here's the road we came up. And I just think it's beautiful. I think the desert is absolutely beautiful. I wanted to note too, right over here, we've had a lot of rain recently. So you see that blue out there is actually uh, the bottom of Lake Lahontan. And there's, wow, over here's a lot more water. So you can see it out there. And there's normally not any water out there except in the winter when it does snow. And rain so here's the landscape out here I think it's gorgeous I really like the desert and here's the little park area and my old truck sitting up there and that's my daughter over there she was kind enough to come with me today. So let's get going on up the path and see the cave. Okay, this is a little bit of a steep trail. So you can't really see how steep it is in the video, of course, but it's a good incline. So we're gonna come up here. Here's a valley down there. Keep watching those holes. We don't need any surprises. Well, they all should be hibernating right now. Well, you'd think so. It yeah. Has been pretty mild. Yeah, the weather has been getting kind of mild, so we we're kind of a mild winter, so maybe we should. Yeah. Keep an eye out for little sneaky creatures. Um, rattlesnakes should be hibernating right now, but we are up. In a rocky area where they could be hiding so we need to keep our eyes open not likely that we'll see them but oh that was a little bit of a climb so uh, oh goodness all right now we have to go up there guys so i'll get back with you in just a minute okay we're just up almost to the main cave but we came up here on this little case, so we're gonna go take a look cautiously. <laughs> okay, let's take a look in here, guys. Okay, I got my fire bang fixed. Yeah, we are locked and loaded, so we're good. I should let you go first. You're the one with the firearm. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I can't shoot through you. No, that's true. Okay. Look at this, guys. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, it's cold. It is cold in here. I almost took my sweatshirt off. I'm glad I didn't. But look at this. This is awesome. This is part of the cave system, but this um, is part of it that actually has fallen in many, many years ago. And there's the bottom of the cave down there. And there's going across the top. Ooh, it's dark up in there. 
but this is part of the cave system that broke loose and caved in. So what I'm standing on down here is uh, debris and dirt that's come in here. Down, and you can see over there where it's broken. This all has fallen in. That down there, way down there, is actually the bottom of the cave. And that was all open at one time. So this is sort of just like a little uh, detour here. I'm going to go on up around. Are you going to come through or are you going to go up the other way? Nope, I'm going up around. Okay, I'm going to go on up this little incline here. Please be careful and don't lose your footing. No worries. I don't want you to slide into some squirrel. <laughs> don't worry. Okay. I'll meet you up there. Okay, okay so I'm just going to see. There's like a little, see, there we are. No big deal. It's a little opening. My path was much easier. Yeah. That was just like a little side trip through there. And again, this is called Lovelock Cave. They estimate that it's probably around 26,000 years old um, from what I've read. And we're up here at the top of the cave and you can kind of see see the little hot basin down there. So we came up oh, I just heard a bat. I'm out. A bat. Oh, I can't do that. So we just uh that's quite an incline. How many feet do you think we came up? Um it's like a really steep incline we enough. just came yeah, we came up that trail right over there. I'd say, I don't know, guessing, a couple hundred. A couple hundred Maybe feet? to a few hundred. A couple to a few hundred. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like watching for bats. <laughs> we're a few yeah. hundred feet, just, I mean, like, almost straight up. But uh, this is, we're actually up at the cave, and this is the opening, and it's so pretty up here. Really awesome. So let's continue on and go on in the cave. I love caves. Caves are cool, but I get a little bit leery until I can see that there's nothing in there waiting to eat me. That's and true. I'm okay with it. Yeah. We have mountain lions and uh, bobcats and rattlesnakes and, ouch, some really fun creatures that you really don't want to run into. Yep. Just look underneath there. And here's the... Of course, it's so quiet. I hear every little... Yeah, you can hear every little thing. There might be bats. Well, this was... There are bats. Yeah, there, this cave at one time was uh, full of bats. And uh, it was discovered in the 1800s. Um, um, actually, the, the Paiute Indians that lived in this area uh, told a uh, visiting archaeologist who was in Lovelock, isn't that pretty out there, uh, about this cave. So he came up here and saw it, but miners had been in here, and the cave was a lot more open at that time too, but miners had come in, and they were mining the bat guano and making quite a fortune out of it, uh, selling it to a manufacturer in uh, San Francisco. And he's using it for to you in explosives and whatever fertilizer, whatever they use it in. And here's a little bit of a if you want to stop the video and read this, a little bit of information. They have found fish hooks, sagebrush sandals, uh, duck decoys, all kinds of stuff in here. And uh, they. Archaeologists came in from uh, use uh, from uh, California and did a whole complete study on it, and uh, it's got quite a legend to it. And I'll put all those details in the uh, in the uh, description area. So let's see if we can go on down in here into the cave. If I don't slide. Let me 
can see where, look at these rocks up above us here. And eventually one day, after years and years and years and years, um, some of this might fall down and finish covering in the opening, but that may be a little while. But uh, the legend is that, the, according to the Paiute Indians, and it's in their for folklore, that there were giants, red-haired giants. Um, they estimated them to be between 8 and 12 feet tall. And depending on who's telling the story, sometimes taller, um, lived in this cave. And you can see that there's been fires in here. Look at the rock. Well, part of the story at one point wasn't there a fire lit to try to flush true, out the natives true. that were living in here? Yes. Okay. Um, so, anyway, they lived in here, but you can see where some of their. Well, the fire at the beginning of the cave is a different story. I'll tell you about that. But back in, uh, this was a really huge cave opening, and now it's fallen in so badly that um, and collapsed that it's not really that huge of a space. It's still pretty impressive. And uh, you can see back. I'm going to show you all the cave wall in here. But it's still pretty impressive. But legend has it they lived in here, the red-haired giants. And uh, they had a habit of, oh, I didn't bring my flashlight. Did you, Sandra? Um, I just have it on my phone, but I just tried it. It's not very bright. Okay. Is it too dark back in there? Uh, no, I can still see in here. I just don't want any surprises. See, look, I'm a chicken, so I'm staying up here. Well, I, I, got, my, I got my Spock ears on. I'm listening. <laughs> Well, somebody was just here because remember we passed right, the right. In, so hopefully they just were. Yeah. I don't care anymore. I'm just being brave. Yeah. Well, we're out here a, many, many miles into the desert away from anybody, so we're just being really cautious. But um, and then they have this nice little platform. The BLM made this platform so you could walk down here into the cave which is really nice. And they bring high school kids and stuff down in here uh, to see the cave. It's a really nice archeolo archeological site. But um, the story was the red-haired giants lived in this cave, um, and this is what's left of it. But they actually lived here. Um, they would catch the Paiute Indians, and uh, the red-haired giants were cannibals. And so they would uh, make meals out of the Paiute Indians. And the Paiute Indians finally got tired of it. And uh, they all banded together one day, came to this cave. And uh, because uh, you can see the black, black marks, let me see if you can see. Yeah, you can see the black where it's burnt. They filled the beginning of the cave in right up there where my daughter is standing. You can kind of see her from the glare of the light. And uh, set all this brush and timber and everything on fire and blocked them in here. Well, after a while, the Indians, you know, the smoke, they, uh, the red-haired giants couldn't take it. And uh, so they started coming out of the cave, you know, a few at a time, and when they would come out, the Indians would shoot them with their bows and arrows and tomahawks or whatever, and they would kill them until finally uh, they had the red-haired giants that didn't die of smoke inhalation were actually killed by the Piotes. So they got rid of them and uh, eliminated their arch enemy, their nemesis, and... Uh, do you feel comfortable enough coming down here with your light over in this dark area for the lower level? Um, I'm just cold. Mostly because I'm standing up here cold. It's a bit chilly in here, yeah. yeah it's really dark, and I don't like that. Well, um, yeah. Okay. See if you can turn your flashlight on your phone. It won't turn on with the video. No. no. Well, let me try it. Hold on, guys. So, um... 
I'm not going to go down on the lower level because we just can't get a, a light. Our phones aren't penetrating the dark enough, but there's not really anything down there except you can see there's just another uh, observation deck, just like this one that I'm standing on. And, uh, yeah, you can't even see the bottom. It's so dark in here. So we really... Sometimes it's really light in here, but I guess we must be here at the wrong time of day. It's pretty dark. Well, it's wintertime, so you like... Yeah, it's wintertime, so it's not not as bright. But uh, just thought I'd show you the cave, guys. And they got rid of the red-haired giants, supposedly, and lived a pretty good life after that. The Paiute Indians were not massacred by them anymore. But that's the uh, legend of this cave. And uh, they're very adamant about uh, their story and just tons of artifacts have been found in this cave uh, that would give indication to it and um, according to the archaeological report that was uh, written they actually did find some mummified skeletons that were uh, eight to ten feet tall inside the cave and then they found some out in the lake bed at the bottom of the cliff out there that were buried in the lake bed that were eight to ten feet tall and you know like i said it depends on who you ask some of them said as much as 12 feet tall but that's the legend of the live like cave and i'll have more details for you in the description so let's walk on back up here i love this cave Listen. It's like deafeningly quiet. It actually hurts my ears. It's just like... Yeah, it actually hurts our ears. It's so quiet. It's, this time of year, it's a little bit too dark for me to go in there. Yeah. I'm afraid. Oh, it's, there's nothing to be scared of in here. Okay, let's go back up. This steep little incline here. Rocky path. I'm going to turn you off, guys, because I don't want to slip and fall. So I'll be with you in a moment. Okay, guys, our last look down into the cave. I love this cave. It's so cool. I love its history and its story. So let's walk on up here. back up to the top part here and it seems like every time I come here there's more and more of this loose loose rock that's fallen and I imagine eventually one day that a lot of this heavy stuff will fall down and that'll be the end of the cave okay guys that's the end of our walk in the desert and cave tour for today. Uh, I didn't take you on the full walk up there because I was huffing and puffing. It's pretty steep, but you kind of got the idea. So I uh, just wanted to give you a look at the cave and I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you have a great day. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and uh, stay safe out there. Bye-bye.